This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Burnout is real, whether it's work, family, kids, or life in general. Here's your reminder to slow down and take care of yourself. Visit betterhelp.com super and learn to manage the burnout. Hey brother! It's possible we don't know everything there is to know about Avada Kedavra, or that what we thought we knew isn't exactly correct. We've always been told that Avada Kedavra is unblockable. In fact, this belief in the wizarding world is like the very cornerstone of the entire Harry Potter series. It's the reason Harry himself is so famous, that despite this spell being unblockable, he somehow survived it and simultaneously defeated the darkest wizard who ever lived as a one-year-old. <laughs> Fairly impressive, I'll give him that. And yet, as of Secrets of Dumbledore, new information about Avada Kedavra has risen to the surface that has made us question the entire notion that it is in fact unblockable. Before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, MeUndies. Guys, you ever just cocoon up in the world's comfiest jammies and sit on the couch and let all of life's problems just melt away? Yeah, me neither. Just kidding, I totally do because I have me undies, which are the world's most breathable undies, loungewear, and beachwear known to humanity. Me undies makes every season more comfortable, but their summer lineup is an absolute must have in my household. Because not only do I need comfy, breathable jammies at home, but I also need to make sure I'm looking styling when I'm going for that pool plunge, y'all. And me undies swim trunks are simply the coolest. I mean, let's face it, y'all, summer is sweaty, but with me undies, your butt doesn't have to be. With MeUndies Micro Modal Fabric, you can stay comfy and cool all summer long. They have super fun seasonal prints to choose from in sizes XS to 4XL. And for those who are brave enough to get out in the heat, check out their new and improved swimwear styles. They're soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. No matter where you're lounging, make it a soft summer with MeUndies. Plus, if you sign up for their free to join membership, you can apply that 15% towards their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, head over to MeUndies.com slash theories. One more time, that is MeUndies.com slash theories. Link is in the description down below. Avada Kedavra, the killing curse, is one of the three unforgivable curses, along with the Imperius curse and the Cruciatus curse. But Avada Kedavra is easily the worst one. It kills its victim instantly, leaving behind no mark or blemish. It's as if they just dropped dead. Not nice, not pleasant, and there's no counter curse. There's no blocking it. Only one known person has ever survived it, and he's sitting right in front of me. Now, the interesting thing is that Moody Nade Crouch Jr. is just obviously wrong here. I mean, you can totally block this curse. I mean, we see Harry alone do it in three, if not four, completely unique ways. Dumbledore does it in two other ways. And we even know several wizarding objects that are just completely immune to its effects. Really, what I think Crouch Jr. means there, though, is that if you're in a duel with someone and they cast Avada Kedavra at you, there's no spell you can conjure up that will impact impede it at all. It would phase right through even the strongest shield charm you could conjure up and any other spell you could possibly throw at it. With some very niche, you basically had to be born the chosen one exceptions. I am the chosen one. And let's talk about those exceptions because while there might not be any counter curse you can conjure up, there are ways you can avoid being hit by the spell or honestly just repel it. First up is the most famous way of surviving Avada Kedavra, sacrificial love. This, as I'm sure you're aware, is how Harry himself himself survived as a baby. Basically, his mom, Lily, was given the option to live, and yet she voluntarily chooses to die anyway, thus enacting a very powerful protective charm that actually has the ability to block Avada Kedavra. This is actually also what Harry ends up doing in the Forbidden Forest when he sacrifices himself for all the people fighting back at Hogwarts. I've done what my mother did. They're protected from you. Haven't you noticed how none of the spells you put on them are binding? You can't torture them. You can't touch them. And while this is no doubt an effective way to block the spell, it also has the unfortunate downside of someone else dying anyway. Which I mean, you know, if you're Harry and you're given the option to come back, I mean, that's great. But most of us don't get that option. I mean, I guess to be fair, Harry was trying to die. He did mean to die, and that is sort of 
part of it. He's very, he's very noble like that. We get it, Harry, you're better than us. But to his credit, Harry does have a few other tricks up his sleeve as well. His second way of blocking Avada Kedavra is to very cleverly have the exact same wand core as his opponent. Totally brilliantly planned in advance, 100% intentional and definitely not a happy accident, am I right? Point is, brother wands have unique magical laws unto themselves, and when they are forced to do battle against one another, they will not do the intended spells that were cast, but instead enact Priori Incantata. Which is exactly what happens in the graveyard at Little Hangleton. Voldemort casts Avada Kedavra, but even that can't overcome this particular brand of magic. In fact, we can even take this one one step further, because if you win that initial Priori Incantatum duel, and then you continue using the same wand against the same person, and they switch wands, you can also overcome Avada Kedavra by just using that wand. This is what happens in the Battle of the Seven Potters, where once again, we get to see just the absolute genius planning of the brain of Harry Potter. His move in this battle, and I will say I did not see it coming, is to plummet to Earth in a motorcycle, and then just let his wand's instincts take over and cast golden fire at Voldemort, who once again was trying to cast Avada Kedavra. Genius, Harry. Genius the way you keep blocking this spell. I mean, you're a regular Scott Sterling. But even that isn't Harry's last way to block this curse. In his back pocket, he always has, and he doesn't use it very often, but he does once, dive behind a headstone. And I'll admit, it's arguably the least magical way he goes about it, but easily the most graceful. No, but I bring it up because this is a genuine way to block the spell. Solid objects? will stop it. There might not be like a magical counter curse, but the intent of the caster will not allow the spell to just pass through any object on the way to its target. Well, at least to a point. By which I mean, most of the victims of the spell are still wearing clothes of some kind. By the way, if you want to get clothes of this kind, you can head over to supercarlinbrothers.store. We have them in lion and eagle and badger and snake, probably the four best animals. My point is the spell goes through clothing. So not just any physical barrier at all will do. In fact, honestly, I suspect even if you had like on a full knight's armor suit of metal, it would still kill you. I mean, maybe if there was some sort of fantastic beast, let's say, that naturally resisted the spell and you made some armor out of their hide or something, I suppose, I suppose maybe that could work. Actually, on that note, Dumbledore comes pretty close to doing something just like that in Order of the Phoenix when he's battling Voldemort at the Ministry of Magic. Similar but less graceful than Harry's gravestone maneuver, Dumbledore uses the golden statues from the fountain to continuously intercept the spell and block Avada Kedavra. Then, when he runs out of statues, Fox himself swoops in and gulps down a mouthful of green spell, which immediately kills him, but of course it doesn't matter because he just comes right back. So, I guess we can add be an immortal bird to ways you can avoid Avada Kedavra? Which honestly though, Dumbledore might really be like full video by clicking the card. Either way though, I don't think a coat of phoenix feathers would actually protect you from the spell though, because after all, Fox, does still die, he just has the unique ability to come right back. Then of course we have objects like Horcruxes and the Blood Pact that are very just unaffected by Avada Kedavra. Or at least I assume so, I mean who knows, maybe Harry, Ron, and Hermione are just too noble to even try the spell on the Horcrux. But somehow I doubt it, I mean Harry does still cast the other two unforgivable curses during the course of their journey, so. But the real reason I think Avada Kedavra wouldn't work on a Horcrux is because their containers are not actually living objects and thus they're not subject to death. Then as for the blood pact, again, maybe Dumbledore is just too noble to even try the spell. But given that the future of the entire world is kind of at stake, I think he'd give it a go. But the real reason I think it wouldn't work on the blood pact is because the blood pact is essentially a love-based spell, very similar to sacrificial love, which seems to be Avada Kedavra's weakness. Or to that end, based on how we see the blood pact act in Secrets of Dumbledore, like where it starts choking and squeezing Dumbledore when he even thinks about attacking Grindelwald, Wald, maybe even then just having the idea to try and use Avada Kedavra on the Blood Pact would cause the Blood Pact to start attacking you so you couldn't even do it. So really he just needed someone who wasn't involved in the Blood Pact at all to try it on there, but honestly I still don't think it would work because of the love, and that's just too strong for Avada Kedavra to work. But that brings us to the newest way to apparently block Avada Kedavra as revealed by Secrets of Dumbledore. And it's probably the best way because it doesn't involve you, you know, being the chosen one or having a twin core with your opponent by random chance.
chance. It doesn't involve someone else dying for you or even you gracefully diving behind a headstone. And you could reuse this method over and over and over. I speak, of course, of chillin' armor. Yeah, that's right. You ain't killing that villain when he's chillin' with some chillin' armor. It's a work in progress. Anyway, though, the chillin' as a refresher is the new featured fantastic beast of Secrets of Dumbledore, and it possesses some truly unique qualities. First and foremost, they have the unique ability to look into someone's soul and judge whether or not they are pure of heart. And if they are, they will bow before them. That's their main thing. And wizards trust their judgment in this regard so highly, they literally use chillins to help choose the new leaders of the entire wizarding world. Which to me was somewhat baffling because it kneels before Dumbledore, possibly the most manipulative character in the entire series, but that's like an entire seven part series. So, although if you really want to see why the chillin' kneels before Dumbledore, you should make sure you have notifications turned on for our channel because we are going to be making that video very soon. But anyway, the other less addressed ability of the chillin' is seen very early in the movie when Newt encounters the first chillin' who is in the middle of labor. And whilst giving birth, Grindelwald's cronies show up and blast the mama chillin' with Avada Kedavra and send Newt running into the woods with the newly born calf. They eventually catch up to Newt, incapacitate him, and then and kidnap the chillin for themselves. But what's interesting here is that when Newt wakes up, he returns back to the mama chillin who is still alive and has managed to give birth to a second twin chillin. And so in case you missed it there, the really important takeaway was that the mama chillin was hit with the Vada Kedavra and didn't die. How do? Now, to be fair, she does still die soon thereafter, so it doesn't look like there were no ill effects from being hit by this curse, but she doesn't die instantly. And that's really the most important thing. She resists the curse. It should kill you instantly, and yet it doesn't. And honestly, I'm not sure that Mama Chillin would have died at all if she wasn't, you know, right in the middle of giving birth and under such duress. Like, I don't know if you've ever been in the same room as someone giving birth to twins, but uh, I have. Look at my boys. Are they cute? Oh, love them. But let me just say, the fact that Mama Chillin gets killed mid-delivery and doesn't die? Hero. I mean, not many people are alive after they've been killed, unless you're Harry. He was just bored that way. I, I have to show you some more. But so then why didn't Mama Chillin die instantly? Well, honestly, I think it comes down to the very same reason that Harry survived when he was attacked as a baby and the same reason Avada Kedavra doesn't work on the blood pact. Love. Not specifically like love for her calves or anything though. Like I'm not saying Mama Chillin invoked sacrificial love here, but Chillins are essentially creatures of pure purity, pure goodness of heart. And as such, I think they possess just a natural resistance to this spell. In fact, even when the kidnapped calf is brought to Grindelwald, did you think it was at all odd that he killed it with a knife instead of just using Avada Kedavra? Yeah, me too. And yet now I'm thinking the real reason he had to do it that way is because Avada Kedavra just wouldn't work. And it's not that I don't think it wouldn't have taken any damage again. The mama chillin does eventually die. Like she does take a beating from the spell, but it's not a guaranteed kill. But so it then stands the reason to me that if you had armor made from a chillin hide, you too could resist Avada Kedavra. I mean, honestly, just look at its fur. It kind of looks like armor to begin with. It's like even kind of scaly. So yeah, I think this spell actually is blockable without any sort of weird, unique circumstances. You just need yourself some chillin' armor. However, the obvious issue here is that chillins are just insanely rare. Like maybe one or two exist at a time ever. And on top of that, the ones that do exist tend to be found by wizards to do really important things like choose the leaders of the wizarding world. And as such, the very rare chillins that do exist are heavily protected by like the most powerful people on earth. So really it's kind of like when Hermione's talking about how she decided not to use the fiend fire on the locket to destroy the Horcrux. Like, yeah, she knows it will work, but it's so dangerous as to not even really be considered an option. Like sure, yeah, if you have this pelt, it'll work, but it's so rare that honestly, it's 
not even considered an option. On top of that, and now this is just conjecture, but I have to imagine that the act of, you know, killing a chillin' comes with its own set of consequences, not unlike killing a unicorn. Which, if you need a refresher, Ferenzi tells Harry, It is a monstrous thing to slay a unicorn. Only one who has nothing to lose and everything to gain would commit such a crime. If you have slain something pure and defenseless to save yourself, you will have but a half-life, a cursed life from the moment the blood touches your lips. Now granted that's killing and then also drinking the blood of a unicorn, but a chillin' seems like it is even more pure than a unicorn. So I have to imagine some kind of similar consequences would be in play. Especially since they see Grindelwald, who is like the Voldemort equivalent of the Fantastic Beast story, also spill the chillin's blood. It's almost like they're trying to do some sort of like parallel between the stories or something. But anyway, guys, that is how you can consistently save yourself from Avada Kedavra without being Harry Potter. Just get yourself a once in a generation pelt that'll probably curse you to even make. Good luck. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see our top unanswered questions from Secrets of Dumbledore, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.